All right, we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our third segment, which is going to be around the same as the other one, uh, just for NL players, uh, NL players that need to prove themselves, um, and just me explaining why. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's get straight into that. So, um, first, we're going to start off with the other New York team, the Mets. Um, ironically, I'm starting with the guy who did come over from the other New York team, the Yankees, and that is Luis Severino. Now, there was a lot of players I could have chosen for the Mets here. Uh, Starling Marte, Brett Beatty, those are the other two guys I really had in mind. But I think when looking at the career landscape right now, it's definitely Severino, in my opinion. Um, was probably the worst pitcher in baseball last year. Um, was just absolutely awful. Was so, so bad. And um, I think this is the this is the year for him. This is, this is the contract he needs to prove to himself. Okay, um, you know... Um, I'm still a player in this league. I'm the Luis Severino you saw with the Yankees all those years. I'm that guy. I'm the baller. I'm the guy who screams when he comes off the mound, um, escapes big jams in the playoffs, has ice in his veins. And I think this contract for the Yankee, for the Mets coming over from the Yankees is kind of his last effort because of the injuries he's had in the past few seasons, because of his horrific performance last year. So, yeah, definitely looking out for him and uh, seeing how he's going to perform and uh, – if he needs, if um, how he is going to prove himself, and seeing where his career goes from here, I'm a believer in him. I've heard what he's been saying all off season. I have officially drunk the Kool Aid on him, but I'm I'm hoping he's uh he's going to perform well, and uh, you know, very excited for him. Uh, next, we're going to the Phillies. Ironically, we're talking about another guy who used to be a Met, um, and that is Taiwan Walker. Um, Taiwan Walker signed a huge contract with the Phillies out of nowhere. Um, a lot of people, including myself. We're very skeptical of this contract, and our skepticism was proven right as he did not perform very well. Um, I don't know why the Phillies gave him this contract in the first place, but the fact is they did, and he needs to perform to that contract. He has not performed very well so far in a Phillies uniform. Um, I think with only two years left in his contract after this year, it would be kind of easier to move him if you attached a prospect. Um... So I think he definitely needs to prove himself, prove why he got that contract this year if he wants to stay in the city of brotherly love and uh, stay a part of that Phillies rotation. Yeah. Um, the Braves were, again, talking about another f- guy who's played for the Mets. This is now four players in a row who have either played for the Mets or play for the Mets currently. I promise I don't do this on purpose. And, uh, by the way, there's also uh, two more former Mets on here, so... Uh, I don't know what's going on with us, but I promise you I did not do this on purpose. Uh, so the guy we're talking about for the Braves is Jared Kelenic. Um, we all know the story about, about Jared Kelenic at this point. Top prospect with the Mets, traded in a Edwin, in the Edwin Diaz trade along with Robinson Cano. Mets were made fun of for years because of the Cano, because of Cano getting suspended for steroids. The contract, that, the money that was on his contract, um, how bad Diaz was to start his tenure with the Mets, but. Karen Kellenic came up with the Mariners, was not good. Um, Diaz became the best closer in baseball, um, reignited the Mets fan base with the trumpets, and the trade kind of turned uh, on the he- on the heel for the uh, on the other side for the uh, public uh, vision of it. So yeah, Kellenic has not played well with the Mariners at all. Kind of has done kind of has done some chatting about the organization as well after leaving. So uh, I definitely think he needs to prove himself with the Braves. Um, the Braves. Uh, you know, they wanted him. They said this is the only position player they actively recruited and wanted. So, yeah, he definitely needs to prove himself with the Braves. He's getting a chance to start on one of the best teams in baseball. And if you can't perform at that, it, um, then I don't think you're ever going to. So I think it's kind of a last-chance effort for him. So that was third team. Two teams, he was a top prospect. Both didn't work out. So, uh, yeah, he definitely needs to uh, prove himself here with Atlanta and uh, what's going to happen there. So, uh, yeah. Uh, next, we're going to the Marlins. Finally, a guy who is not associated with the Mets at all. That is Tim Anderson. Um, yeah, Tim Anderson um, obviously was one of the best players in baseball with the White Sox. Um, won a batting title. Again, batting average, we don't put that much of importance on it anymore. But at the same time, batting title still is impressive. Um, was a very good player for the White Sox um, when they were in the playoffs as kind of the young team of the future. Obviously, that did not work out very well because of just a multitude of decisions, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Um, you know, struggled just horrifically last year, which was so bad. Um, negative war um, was really, really bad. was one of the worst possession players in baseball. 
signing a one-year $5 million contract with the Marlins, a prove-it contract sh- showing teams that, okay, I'm back to myself. Last year was a fluke, and uh, I'm really hoping that I can uh, go back to being the Tim Anderson that you guys all knew and uh, the guy that you are uh, looking forward to uh, being a part of that Marlins team. And if he is good, he gets to be a part of that Marlins core, and if he's and if he's not, the Marlins just move on. So uh, I think if he's not good with the Marlins this year, he might be out of a uh, might be out of a job in Major League Baseball. But uh, we'll see. Uh, finally, ending up with the Nationals again hard because they have a lot of good young players. No one that really needs to prove himself. Um, for me, the obvious answer was Joey Gallo. Um, they signed him to a one year contract. Obviously was a great player with the Rangers, got traded to the Yankees, did not work out there um, for a lot of reasons. Got traded to the Dodgers, was fine, but it was only half a season. Um, then got traded to uh, the Dodgers, did not go very well with uh, with L.A. So, um, yeah, then signed with the Twins, did not work out well there at all. So, um, yeah, he definitely has one last chance here with the Nationals, I'd say, a national scene that is really, really bad. Again, not saying anything too crazy. We all know this. So, um, yeah. Nationals definitely need to uh, prove themselves, and um, he definitely needs to prove himself on the Nationals, sorry. Um, and, um, yeah, I think this is the last chance to be on this uh, team with no uh, no uh, expectations, and if he doesn't really, if he doesn't play well, I think that's kind of the end for him, and uh, we'll be seeing what happens with him in the future. So uh, definitely a do-or-die season for uh, Mr. Gallo. Uh, the Pirates here. Again, hard because they're a young team. They don't have many players to uh, prove themselves, yada, yada, yada. I've said this a few times now. You get it. Uh, for me, it's a Roldis Chapman, though. Um, Signed up, sign a pretty big contract for his sakes with um, the one-year $10 million. Uh, Sorry, sorry. It's one-year $10 million contract um, for this year. Um, you know, I think... I think when you look at his past, when you look at some of the controversies he's been in um, with the Yankees, with uh, legal troubles as well, not playing the best with the Rangers, was pretty good with the Royals. They kind of fixed him, but was not great with the with the Rangers. Um, signing a big deal with the Pirates to be in that back end of the bullpen with David Bednar, with Colin Holderman. And I definitely think he needs to prove himself here. Um, you know, be really good, and um, I think his career will go on. But if he if he flounders here, if he does not pitch very well, I'm not sure what's going to go on with him in the future. So, uh, yeah, needs to uh, definitely needs to prove himself here with the uh, Pirates. Next is another guy who absolutely needs to prove himself. That is Jamison Tyone. Got a big contract from the Cubs last offseason, and uh, immediately it did not turn out very well. He was just so, so bad with the Cubs. Um, needs to prove that he is um, good still. You know, has been working with Driveline this offseason. We'll put in the work. Seems like a very nice guy, cool guy. A lot of people say nice things about him, but you got to perform at some point. And, uh, you know, has not performed very, has not performed up to his contract so far with the Cubs. It's only been one year, but it's only a four year deal. So uh, he definitely needs to uh, step it up and uh, pitch well this year and uh, show the Cubs why they gave him that contract and uh, keep him in their future. Keep, needs to keep himself in the future plans of the Cubs and uh, what's going on with them. Uh, next, we have the Brewers. Uh, it's Reese Hoskins. Um, it's not really like a big one. It's just that he was injured last year. Um, didn't miss the entire season for a good reason. I mean, tore his ACL. Um, signed a proven contract with the Brewers, a one-year deal. Um, definitely needs to um, definitely needs to um, show why the Brewers gave him that contract after coming off of injury. And um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely think this is a guy that needs to uh, have a good season with the Brewers. Maybe not. I don't think it would end his career if he didn't, but he's coming off a big injury. Brewers signed him for a reason. And if he does have a good season, he'll probably get traded to a better team at the deadline and be a part of their winning there. So uh, I think that's an incentive for him as well. Uh, next is the Reds. Um, same thing as Hoskins, like the exact same situation, kind of. Frankie Montas was hurt all of last year, uh, except for one start. Sorry, one start. Amazing. Um, you know, he needs to uh, prove himself with the Reds show why he, the Reds gave him that one-year contract that was worth a good amount of money. Um, I'm a big fan of the signing. I've said it multiple times now on the show. But if he doesn't prove this, you know, with the scenes he's had in the past few years, I don't really know what his future looks like. So, uh, yeah, Frank, if you're Frankie Montas with the Reds right now, you definitely need to uh, show your show yourself and show your team why they gave him that contract and uh, why, why he is part of that team. 
finally for the Cardinals, another former Met. I promise only one more former Met after this. You know, it's okay. Only one more former Met. Um, it is Steven Matz. They, he got a big contract from the Cardinals and has not performed to it at all. Was moved to the bullpen. Was not great there. Um, I'm not very high in his future, but I think he does need to prove himself uh, with the Cardinals and uh, what he's going to do in the future with them and um, how he is going to uh, perform and if he's going to perform up to his contract. So we'll uh, we'll definitely see if that what happens with that and um, yeah how that works out for him and uh, what's going to happen there. Um, so we're going to move to the NL West here now. Um, the first one is the Diamondbacks. Again, it was hard because they have a lot of good young players who aren't of the need to prove themselves, like I've said a few times now. Um, so um, the first one I would say, though, is Randall Grichik for the Diamondbacks. He comes to mind. Signed him to a one-year deal to be a platoon with Jock Peterson. Was DFA'd by his team throughout the year. Um, got traded you know, got traded to the Angels. Um, was DFA'd by the Angels, sorry. And then no one picked him off off waivers, so he just stayed there. So, um, yeah, not a very high uh, high bar on the league, but he's got a chance, a chance with the Diamondbacks to start as DH against lefties, and I think he needs to uh, take advantage of that. And if he doesn't, I think that would be the end for him, just with the seasons he's had in the past few years. And, uh, yeah, the big contract with the Blue Jays, that did not work out. So, um, yeah. The Dodgers, um, for me, it's clearly Walker Bueller. Um, he was out all of last year with an injury. Um, was supposed to come back, but had a setback. He's not going to be a big part of the uh, the Dodgers rotation this year with the new additions as well. Um, has had some injury risk already at the start of the spring, so he definitely needs to show people he he is the Walker Bueller of the past, that menacing young fireballer who you know unfortunately had some injury risk, but he needs to prove himself this year with the Dodgers um, and show why uh, the Dodgers are counting on him to be a big part of that rotation. Uh, the Giants next. Here's the former Met finally, uh, Mike Conforto. Uh, that's the last one, I promise. Uh, I don't know why that, why there's so many. I didn't notice that until the show. But, uh, yeah, um, he obviously was out for a whole year after having an injury in off-season workouts. Signed a two-year contract with the Giants. Um, did not perform very well last year. He didn't perform bad, just didn't perform very good. So um, I think if he wants to be an outstanding player again like he was with the Mets, I mean, he was an all-star. was one of the top prospects in baseball. So, um, yeah, he definitely needs to uh, have a better season with the Giants. And, um, yeah, needs to uh, show why he is looking forward to the past, why he got that contract, and uh, what can happen here with that. So, um, yeah, I mean, definitely needs to prove himself this year and uh, prove himself to the Giants and their fan base as well. Uh, Padres. I'm talking about a former Padre here who went back to the Padres after being on a few teams. Uh, and that is Lu- Luis Patino. Um, he was a big part of the Snell trade. I would argue the front, the centerpiece of the Snell trade to San Diego. Didn't work out with the Rays. Didn't work out with the White Sox. And now he's coming back to the Padres, the team that traded him. But they know him the best. He was a former top prospect with them. So, um, yeah, I mean, he needs to work on his stuff. He needs to show why he was a former top prospect. Um, has not worked out very well so far. But, um, yeah, he needs to show that, show why he is that. And, um why he was thought of so highly around the league. I thought he was a steal when the Padres got him, when the Rays got him for Snell. Obviously didn't work out. So, uh, yeah, come back to the Padres. Probably going to be working out of the bullpen. This is one of his last chances to uh, show why he is, uh, why he was a top prospect and why he can still be a good pitcher in this league. Finally, another former Padre who was involved in a different trade. Um, Cal Quantrill uh, was traded uh, in the Clevenger trade to Cleveland. Had a nice start there, but just in the end didn't work out. Got uh, non-tendered and signed with the Rockies. Obviously not a great place for, uh, for a pitcher to go in uh, Colorado, but he needs to prove himself somewhere, and uh, the Rockies were the team he chose, I guess, or the team that chose him if he didn't have uh, many contract offers. So, yeah, uh, Quantrill needs to uh, perform with the Rockies, kind of save his career with that fact that he got non-tendered. So, um, yeah, looking forward to him and looking forward to seeing what he does with uh, Colorado. And hopefully he can rebound after some uh, rough seasons in uh, the land. All right, so we're going to move on to our final segment here, which is going to be uh, just regular news around the league and uh, what's going on with that. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. But first, we're going to go to a break, and we'll uh, see you after that. So uh, thanks. Bye. <laughs> 